Let's talk about content hacking for the win, how to grow your online traffic with epic content. That's me, my name is Mallory Whitfield, and I started blogging in 2001, really, but I started my current website, missmallorycrop.com, in 2006. I learned a whole lot about SEO, search engine optimization, online marketing, social media, which is how I landed my current job here at FSC Interactive as a content analyst. So now that you know a little about me and my background, let's get started. What makes content great? Well, great content is evergreen. Great content stands the test of time. Doesn't matter if you come today or two years ago or two years from now, it's always gonna be useful and it's always gonna be great for the end user. This is a post that a friend of mine wrote as a guest blog on my website back in 2011. And even though it's been over six years since she wrote it, it's still useful, people still come, and they read this content, it's really great. There's a few things that I've had to update, like some certain products, uh, cameras, and certain photography equipment, but other than that, the base of the content is evergreen. It stays useful throughout time. Great content delivers value. It's going to help your user and create a great experience for the website visitor. This is one of my most popular posts from my own website. It's called How to Make a Living as an Artist or a Crafter. And this post started out because I didn't want to answer the world's longest email. I get this question a lot. I've done art markets, and participated in craft fairs, I've done all sorts of artsy things over the years. And so I created this post to answer a whole lot of questions all at once and help a lot of people. And because I created so much useful, valuable content here, this website, this post on my website gets a ton of traffic. As you can see, it's more than 2,000 words now, but I keep updating it as people come and ask me more questions. Now, great content also goes in depth. This is a post that we did here at FSC Interactive. This is one of our clients' first lake apartments. This is one of our oldest clients. We've been working with them for many years. And when we first started working with them, the internet and blogging was a much different beast. The posts that we originally started out were three or 400 words because that was, that was the status quo at the time. But we started to notice that certain blog posts got more traffic and we realized that they would be more valuable to the visitor if all of the information was compiled in one place. So in 2015, we merged a few different posts and compiled them into this, the first apartment essentials, checklist and guide to finding and moving into your first apartment. And now it's one of the most popular blog posts on this website and it's great because it draws that ideal customer to our client's website. They're looking for their first apartment and the client First Lake offers apartments. It's a great win-win. Now great content also fills a void. This is currently my most popular post on my website. It's called The Ultimate Guide to Conferences for Creatives. And I created it because I was looking to have a great resource of conferences that I would like to attend, that I would like to possibly speak at. And so I couldn't find anything like that. I found a handful of articles that had maybe five, po five conferences or 10 conferences. I wanted something bigger, something much more comprehensive and in-depth, so I created it. I now update it every single year. I have a 2017 list and I have a Google spreadsheet that goes along with it that I keep up to date. And I get emails all the time from people who are sending me a suggestion for another conference that I missed and so I'll add to it and update it continually. It's become a really great resource, not just for me, but for all sorts of people that have found it. So the reason that I included all of those numbers of keywords throughout the slides was that the average web page that ranks in the top 10 results for any keyword on Google has more than 2,000 words. Do you want to know the reason why? Because content-rich pages tend to get more links. And we all know that links are what the internet runs on. That's the magic power that sends all of that SEO juice from one website to another. When you link from your website to another website, that's helping Google and those other search bots find that new website. So that's why we love links. Now, we know what, make, we know what makes content great, but what makes content epic? Do you know? Well, epic content starts from humble beginnings. None of these posts would exist if they hadn't started somewhere. 
as I mentioned with that first Lake Epic blog post that we have now, it started with a handful of other blog posts that were good, but they weren't epic yet. So you've got to start somewhere. Now, epic content combines the best aspects of great content and it pushes it to that next level. So you've got to focus on your best stuff. Now, if you've never heard of the Pareto Principle, the 80-20 rule, it's this. It's that 80% of your results are going to come from 20% of your work. So that's where you've got to concentrate on that top 20%. Now for my website and for most other websites that I've worked with on clients, that top 20% of the entire pages on a website send 80% of the traffic. So I'd much rather spend my time focusing on those handful of pages that are in the top 20% and leave the rest for you know next go around than to spend all of my time trying to fix the stuff that's performing the least. I'd rather spend my time on what's already working and continue to improve that. And that's what I call the content upcycle method. And the content upcycle method is find what's working, make it better, rinse, repeat. So how do you find it? Well, you've got to create great content, right? Again, you have to start somewhere, so just get started. Great content answers questions and it solves problems for your readers. So always start with the user in mind. As I mentioned in my How to Make a Living as an Artist or a Crafter blog post, that post started out because people were emailing me questions over and over. They were asking me in person. And I wanted to create a really great resource so that I could just send them that link when they asked me that question next time. I didn't have to reply with the world's longest email. That's a great place to start. Now step two, you want to analyze your existing content. That's where Google Analytics comes in. This is a screenshot from my Google Analytics on my website from quite a few years ago now. But what I noticed is that I was having a lot of traffic for certain types of posts. And these posts were all related to craft shows. Like I said, I did a lot of craft shows over the years, and so I'd written various posts about it. Where to find good craft shows, tips about how to set up your craft show display better. And I could have just improved upon each of these posts and made them better so that it would bring in more traffic to my website. But what I decided to do instead was that I upcycled my top content into a product. I actually turned it into a book that's now available on Amazon for both Kindle and I have a Create Space print on demand published book. I'm a published author. And you can be one too. It's really easy when you've already got great content to work with to just take it, upcycle it, repackage it, and create something of value. You can make it be a free opt-in ebook that could drive more email subscribers for your website, or you could sell it and make money. Now, step three, we wanna make it better, right? Well, how can you make your existing content better? You definitely wanna check for freshness and accuracy because you know things change so quickly, they get outdated, so you wanna make sure that all of those links are still fresh. You don't want any broken links on your website. That's a really terrible user experience. You also wanna check for any outdated information. So if you're linking to a certain product that maybe is not in stock anymore, link to a new product that is in stock, things like that. You also wanna check for keyword optimization. This is gonna be really crucial to making sure that your website is optimized for search engines. If you haven't seen this guy, Brian Dean, you're gonna to have to check him out. He runs a site called Backlinko and he shares so much really fantastic information for people who are interested in learning more about SEO, search engine optimization. And he has this technique that he calls the WAG technique, which is, oops, oh, which is write, ask Google. So basically the idea is that you write a lot of really great content and think about the user first, right? We don't wanna write for search engines because that's how you come up with keyword stuffed content. And that is bad, it's a bad user experience, and it's also really against Google's guidelines. So you wanna write with the user in mind first, but then as you're tweaking things before you hit publish or when you're going back to an older existing post to make it better, you wanna search and see all of the different variations that Google and the other search engines are thinking are relevant to your original search. So here I've got um, craft show tips. So maybe craft show tips for beginners or craft show tips for your display or what to sell at craft shows. Other related phrases 
keywords and things that people might search for that are also related to you. This is all the information that you can use to beef up your post, both in terms of the keywords on the page and the big ideas that are included on that page. Now next you want to check for your conversion optimization because if you're sending all of the traffic in the world to your page but nobody's buying your stuff or taking action or signing up for your offer, it doesn't matter. So calls to action, CTAs as we like to call them you know, in the industry, um, they tell your user exactly what you want them to do. Stuff like buy now, click here, call now. You've got to add that stuff and keep it simple. Keep it simple, stupid, right? We've all heard of this principle. It's important because people want a really easy user experience, especially as all of the searches and all of our time online is moving more and more towards mobile devices. Things have to be really, really simple. They have to load fast. You want to eliminate any clutter. If your website is cluttered with all sorts of ads and blinking things and lots of music that auto plays, that's a terrible user experience. You want to focus on the most important offer that you have or whatever action it is that you want your visitors to take once they're on your website. You can also use bright, bold buttons. We all love a good button that makes us want to click. Heat maps can also help. This is a screenshot of my website a couple of years ago before I revamped it, and I was using a tool called Hotjar. Um, and Hotjar is really great because it can create a heat map of your website and show you the different places that people are actually clicking their mouse. And what I noticed is that I have these great collage style images on my site that perform really well on Pinterest. They're vertical, it's a beautiful collage with white background and lots of products and a little bit of text, and it makes people who found it on Pinterest want to click through to my site, so it draws a lot of traffic. But what I noticed is that once people got there, they were trying to click on specific products on that image, and then they couldn't get to anything else because there was no easy way for me to break up that image to have that post link through to those individual specific products. So what I did instead was that I created a more shoppable experience. I updated my website and made it function a little bit more like an e-commerce site where every single product image was a separate image and it could link specifically and directly to that product page. And the reason this is important to me is because on this blog post and on my site, I use Amazon Associates, which is an affiliate program. So every time somebody clicks through one of those products, like Cards Against Humanity, and then they buy, it puts a cookie on their browser, and so when they make a purchase, they buy Cards Against Humanity on Amazon, I make a commission. That means I make money. And after I was able to go through and optimize this experience, this one post, I have a funny white elephant gift ideas post on my site, this one post in December of 2015 cashed me in $4,700 in that one month just from Amazon Associates. That's one blog post in one month, almost $5,000. So that's really the proof in the pudding. 